All right, guys. So let's discuss the concept of BPM implementation, and there are several aspects to talk about in BPM implementation. Right from a particular area of implementation, what you, what are the factors that you need to consider for implementation? From there on, to what are the benefits? What are the risk? One probable question in the exam from the seven subtopics that we are going to discuss right now. One of the examiner's favorites being, what is business process automation, or what are the benefits and risks of BPA? Right, couple of topics later we will see that. Right, anyway, guys, I want you to understand what is the concept of BPM implementation. What are the factors that we consider for BPM implementation? It's a very very simple topic. Chalo, let's go ahead. I want everybody to read topic number one point seven on BPM implementation. As the business process may cover different people working in different departments, different people working in different departments, the organization should also consider. Underline allocating issues such as process owners, process managers, and the method of measuring the effectiveness and efficiency of a business process. This is also implies that with most organizations, the business and IT should be involved. Underline business and IT should be involved. Business and IT should be involved. In the end, our nation should develop a mindset. That implementing BPM technology can contribute towards organization becoming what process centric. Guys, those organizations which do not have process are what functional. functional. That is department centric. They are only department. Get the work done. Functional, very good. But these organizations which implement BPM should become ultimately what process centric. What are they supposed to become process centric? But how do you do this? Is a very important thing. How do you do this? Let's see how this work. First of which, sir, I want to implement BPM. Then I have some factors to consider. Guys, tell me one thing. This is the first time that we are going for process. This is the first time that we are going for process. Will you go for process in one area, or a few areas, or all areas? You could choose any of this, right? So, like that, we are supposed to consider factors. Seven factors we will consider. First key factor that you need to consider is to decide the scope. What is the scope? Are you going to do a single area? Are you going to do a department? Or are you going to take up process implementation for the entire company? It's a very small sole proprietor business. Can we go for the entire company? Yeah, comfortably. It is a big organization with multiple activities. Then maybe first you want to automate or process implement process in one area, and then go for the other area. So decide the scope. One by one you want to go, or all at once. Second one, sir, why am I doing BPM implementation? What is the goal of BPM implementation? The goal could be simply to understand the process. Guys, if process is already existing, did we read one of the principles to say continuous improvement of process or not? So, can we do that also now? So, goal could be to understand the process, underline, improve the process, automate the process. Already, what is created? Creating that again, re-engineering the process. Or we already studied in BPM life cycle optimization, making it much, 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 much better. Are you understanding? So, what is our scope, guys? What could be possible scope? Scope could be maybe one area, or a department with few areas, or maybe the entire company. And what are the various goals that we can have? The goal that we, what are the various goals that we can have? Maybe to understand, improve, automate. Re-engineer or optimize. So many more goals are there which we can do. All right, guys. Should we? What are the two types of methods that I talked about in process? Incremental. Incremental. That is very good. Going step by step. Other one is radical. 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 So next factor that you need to consider is: Are we going incremental or are we going radical? See some of the methods given there. TQM, Six Sigma, BPR, BPR, Six Sigma. Right, all these are you know BPM life cycle method. Whatever you learned some time back, are they incremental or are they radical? Some of them are incremental, like six sigma and all are very incremental. You can't achieve perfection in one day. BPR and all are radical redesigns. Right, so different methods are there. Both are there. So what are the two types of methods, guys? Either it could be incremental or it could be radical. That is your third factor that you need to consider. First factor is the scope, goal, method to be used. Then, guys, for doing this activity, do you think you require some skills? 
Remember, continuously train the workforce. Put up people supposed to continuously train them and all that. See there. What are the skills required? You might as well have to hire consultants. Or you may as well have to train your own employees. Get them formal certifications. Give them basic education about the process. And use your own existing skill sets. You might have to do all that. To explain process, can I use the board? Guys, I want some tools. How to explain a particular process to the employees? How to explain? Can I call all of them like this and put a meeting and explain it on a whiteboard? Can I send circulars? Guys, can I send circulars? Yes. Can I send emails? Right? Let's see some of the tools to be used. Whiteboards. Sticky notes. Small sticky notes. Softwares for mapping and documenting. Software for simulation. Comprehensive business process management softwares. So if, if you are using a software, life is more easy. We will discuss about all that in a short while using those softwares. Right now, there are also how to communicate. Talk about the tools. One of our five to consider. Right? Scope, goals, methods to be used. Okay, I miss skills. What are the skills required? Then also what are the tools? Guys, one of our six is a very, very important point. Without which nothing can be done. What is that? Investment. Investment means what, guys? Investment means what? Yes. Financial investment, but always don't be under the wrong impression of finance. Finance is not the only investment. Guys, money is not the only investment. Time is not an investment. Yeah? Time is also an investment, right? So don't always run behind only money as that investment. So what are the investments that you need to put? How much money you need to put? How much time you need to put? What tools you need to put? Investments. Training, tools, time. All that you have to check how much you have to put. And lastly, guys, who should do business implement? I mean, BPM implementation. Which level? Should their part? I mean, their participation is important or not? They are the guys who are supposed to sponsor this. The last but the most important factor that you need to check is sponsorship. Sponsorship means what? Who is spending the time? So, guys, do you need the top level's time? For what? To implement the process. Who will understand all these process? The managerial level. Who will understand the process? The managerial level. Who will ultimately do the process? So guys, which level should contribute? Underline, what are you seeing then? Underline. Executive level is required. Managerial level is required. Operational function level. Which level participation is required guys? All levels. So understood, what are the seven factors that you need to consider? Please read that small table once again. What is the scope? What is your goal? What methods should you follow? What skills are required? What tools are required? What investment is required? Money, time, training. What is the investment that you need to put in to improve the process? And what is the sponsorship that you are looking at? From which level? And the answer is all levels you are looking for sponsorship. Are you understanding all these points? Very. Are you clear guys? Yes. Right. Well, yeah. Right. Okay, very good. Are you clear on all these points? These are all the factors to be considered for implementing BPM. Do you think it's a very easy task? Do you think it's an easy task to go ahead? It's not an easy task, but at the same time, it's not a difficult task also. Just that you need to bring the right people together, things will be fine. Huh. But doing that itself is a very big activity. Chalo sir, tell us, we are ready to do BPM implementation. But tell us what we need for doing a BPM implement. Do you think you need top level participation? Yes. Do you think you also need bottom level participation? Yes. You need everybody's participation. Okay, do you think it's a long term activity or a short term activity? Can be, can be both. Can be both? Yes. How do you say that? Depending on, the method, Depending on the method that we are implying. Mm -hmm. Aray, you should always focus on long term future positioning of your company should always think that your company will do good in the long run. But don't forget, we won't be happy in future by not eating today. So you should also think about short term cost effectiveness. Guys, today keeping my stomach hungry will not give me energy to work tomorrow. Where am I thinking of future? So what is important, eating today or saving it for future? Eating. Both. Oh, okay, eating today is always important. <laughs> right? Okay, eating is important. Very good. Uh, apart from eating, we should also save for future, correct? 
some people live it up differently like say some people today is important this then when they get to the futuristic situation are i should have saved will be a feeling some people will be like they won't enjoy today sir future i will save for it save for it save for it suddenly you die <laughs> understood right so saving for future in all situation may not work so effectively two things need to be focused here while you do a bpm one is long term future positioning to short term effectiveness and when it comes to business you got to position the business for the long term and also make sure that it is cost effective in the short these are the first two very basic needs check out the need for implementing bpm guys need for a bpm implementation sir i want to do a bpm implementation what should i keep in my mind first point underline you need create a long term future positioning for yourself guys at the same time don't forget point number 2 is also very important create short term cost effectiveness and improve customer service so now tell me long term future positioning is important or short term cost effectiveness sir both are important and whenever you set a process concentrate on both and guys don't put the process into action once and sleep underline continuous improvement you know that point already introduce a knowledge of the product and customer profitability educate people on what your product is those dead processes that you have don't run them like that itself they are not going to get you anything so what you should do recreate re engineer the business process underline radically not small small changes don't worry i'll discuss the concept of bpr in detail but right now i'm just telling you that you know small small incremental changes i don't want i want something great right re engineer the business radically and provide clear future competitive differentiation address cultural barriers guys culture should never be a hindrance in the process i will employ people of my religion only i will employ people of my caste only right these are things that are far to be left behind you won't progress otherwise if you have a person who is very skilled in another religion will you not take them what is that ridiculous you know classification of religion and culture and caste in an organization guys we are coming together in organization to achieve a purpose not to talk about caste creed language gender there are not points to consider address those cultural barriers no but not everybody will be as open and happy about it some people do take all these seriously caste religion gender these biased points are serious for some people you can't change their mindsets you can only handle them somebody who is very aged you can't go them and tell change your attitude did we ever try to change our parent they won't change because not it's not their problem or our problem those thoughts are deeply rooted in their head it will take time we will also see in study when i went about how to address cultural barriers in an organization separate topic is there right so here also they are asking you when you are implementing such bpm things and all always focus on always focus on what always focus on cultural barriers address cultural barriers so that one department other department will coordinate and work they don't fight underline prevent effect i mean cultural barriers all those that prevent that cross functionality so guys cross functionality should be there or not there cross functionality is one of the basic essentials one department should connect to the other any hindrance in this process anybody stopping that should be immediately addressed are you understand you address all those cultural barriers sir that marketing guy is another religion i won't talk to worry you can't do that you can't just say that from one department another department coordination will not be there because they belong to some cultural gap is there between them understood address all those cultural barriers that stop cross functionality and most importantly introduce somebody who can take care of all this underline leadership is what drives sir i want to successfully implement bpm get a nice leader if a nice leader is there he will make sure that bpm is implemented probably last point is what introduce leadership and role for managers with some empowered and motivated staff if you have motivated staff and good leadership that's when process will work otherwise process owner is relaxing employees will even more be relaxed nobody will work towards a goal have a good leader who can motivate empower the staff get the job done can you give me all the needs for a bpm implementation a long term future positioning with short term cost effectiveness continuous improvement in processes ha ah. very good knowledge distributing knowledge then point number 
re-engineering existing process. Point number six, address. Yes, address cultural barriers which ever affect your cross functionality. And seven, have a leader and have empowered staff. Then we will see who will stop us from achieving what we want to achieve. All right. Now I want everybody to concentrate here because I'm going to introduce you to a new equation, not new concept. Concept continues to remain the same. I'm going to bring about, yes, there is a birth of new concept, but it's a simple equation. The new concept that is taking birth here is called BPA, Business Process Automation. Guys, automate means what? Or what is automation? Automation is all about use of computers. Sir, what are you talking about? Very simple. BPM. BPM by nature, is it with IT or without IT? By nature, it is not any IT or something, no? It's only a process, correct or not? So, guys, all that I am doing, a BPA, the mathematical equation of BPA is equal to what? BPM, all my business process management techniques plus IT. Automation of all functions, finance, marketing, HR. Can I, do I have softwares in all these in today's scenario? Tally is there in accounting. Right? You forget about tally and all small softwares. We have ERPs like I mean SAP and Oracle, which combine all these five functions into one software. Such amazing softwares are there today. Automation is a boon for today's business. Let's see how automation is done. Small topic. Automation of all functional units. And guys, I will tell you what are the benefits of going for automation. But remember, guys, today I'm telling you one thing. This will continue and haunt us till we finish. Discussing all the chapters, that is, discuss any concept in IT, any concept in IT which have advantages. You talk about IT, it will give you a list of advantages. Same time, remember, it's a buy one, get one free offer. If you buy that product for a set of advantages, risk will come for free. Understood? So, every concept in IT which has a set of advantages will automatically have some downsides also. Sir, can you tell us any fantastic technique to overcome these risks? One fantastic technique is there. If you don't want IT risks, don't use IT. Huh? Can we do that? That is the only way to avoid risk. Sir, can I bring down the risk? Yeah, you might try to do that by bringing down. Sir, I want to eliminate. Not possible. Sir, then I don't want the concept of risk only. Don't use IT only. Are you understanding? So, if you are using IT, risk will come for free. So, by automation, we will not only see advantages, we will also see some risks. So, before I go to this, let me teach you what automation is. Then we will see three advantages and two downsides also. Chalo, next, let's concentrate. Automation. The consumer is often confronted, the consumer is often confronted with poor customer service due to broken processes, inefficient process and manual process. That is, the customer is often confronted with online the silos of the organization. What is silos guys? Isolated parts of the organization. We want everything to be together or isolated? We want everything to work together. But customer is often facing that isolation. Then what to do? Bring all of them on the same platform. How? Through automation. Let's see. However, the same consumer is becoming more and more demanding right? and expecting in reduction in delivery time. Somebody is wanting in 3 days, now he is wanting it in 2 days. The consumer is demanding high quality of products and services. Finally, the product or service is becoming more and more personalized, supported by increased customer service. Automation is a gift or automation is a threat? Automation is good or automation is bad? It's both. Sir, why do you say automation is good? Yeah, because it's going to give us three benefits. But at the same time, it's coming with a couple of risks also we have to handle. Guys, tell me one thing. If you automate your process, which is not automated by our competitors, huh? do, we, uh, do we be the first one to do that or not? So, can we stay ahead in competition? Can we stay ahead in competition or not? By using automation, all the repetitive works are now done by the computer, correct? Can you reduce cost? Earlier 10 employees were working. Now can we reduce the employee count or not? So cost reduction is one of the best parts of this whole story. Staying ahead of competition. 
right as long as others don't bring in right we can stay ahead in competition and of course till now you are never using computers but now you are using computers so that also means that till now your data was not expected i mean not exposed to anybody but now your data is ex getting exposed to somebody so is security a threat or not yes or no yes. and guys with bringing these new techniques with bringing these new techniques of automation into picture like sometime i was i mean sometime back i was addressing you about people who don't know this will they lose their jobs you will bring a new breed of managers to handle all the automated stuff what about those old people who worked for your organization will they lose jobs or not they might or they might not lose but is there a threat of losing jobs or not guys three good advantages with two simple downsides i will explain you all these then you can read three advantages one savings in cost savings in cost two staying ahead staying ahead in competition and three rendering faster services to customers using it guys earlier if i have to lodge a complaint or any customer care issue i have to go somewhere stand in a queue you know launch the complaint then come right now with automation are we able to launch our complaints to machine or not an automatic teller is sitting on the other side you just dial it will ask you to dial 1 2 3 depending on whatever language you want to choose and then it will give you various options you can launch the complaint and keep it automatically a service guy is coming to your house and solving it thanks to automation faster services are rendered to the customer at the same time by bringing all these there is always a fear of losing jobs fear of losing jobs and security comes to be an issue false sense of security false sense of security always being a problem check it out guys this is an exam question i want everybody to mark two stars to topic number 1.7.4 savings and cost staying ahead in competition faster service to customers three advantages of bpa while risk of losing jobs and false sense of security being the two downsides i want everybody to read these five topics i mean five points can you read all the five point guys automation leads to savings in another in time and labor cost staying ahead in competition today in order to survive business need to adopt automation then faster service to customers though this was not the initial reason for adoption of bpa but gradually business managers realized that underline automation could help them to service their customers much faster but guys jobs that were earlier perform manually jobs that were earlier perform manually okay ha huh. would now be mechanized and people might end up losing jobs right people might end up losing jobs false sense of security what is the false sense of security automating poor process will not gain better business practices guys with a process can we achieve something without process yes with process we can achieve it in much systematic manner if you are automating the process we can achieve those results much faster are you understanding if you automate a wrong process what will happen wrong results will come much faster <laughs> correct or not first of all using a wrong process itself will get you wrong results and if you are automating that wrong result will come more faster right so that's one of the reasons why you need to understand what you need to automate at what point in time understood okay but guys all this is not simply done there are so many challenges in doing it do you need money to do all this our nation is not spending budget is not there people are not available so implementing bpa is not a cool activity as well five challenges are there let me take you through the five challenges come on everybody challenges in implementing bpa first and foremost thing tell me environment is stable or dynamic dynamic, dynamic. by the time you implemented a bpm environment changed point number 1 or challenge number 1 underline coping up with the demands of environment coping up with the demands of environment guys today how to reach the customer 
How many ways are there to reach the customer? You can reach them directly through phone, through SMS, through email. Which one is the best? You can't decide. A challenge. Sir, I want to automate my process. Very good. So, by sending SMS, is it an automation? By email, is it an automation? You can use any of these and call it automation. Which one will you choose? So, the second challenge is choosing the right interface for a customer. Like say for somebody, if they send me an email, I check my email daily because I am a professional in business. So, I might have to check my email daily. If you send my mother who is a housewife an email, that time it won't work. Maybe you might have to go for a TV advertisement for her because she ends up watching TV. So guys, you might have to know the correct interface to reach the customer. Are you understanding? A particular product, how to reach that product to the customer is a very important question. You want to find a process for that. How many number of interfaces are there with the customer? Several. So you don't know what to do. That is exactly the problem here. Underline the number of interfaces are increasing. Sir, it is a very big challenge. I mean, it's, it's not a difficult thing to select. Ultimately, out of all that, you have to select one. Which is the one you will select is a challenge. Challenge number one, coping up with the changes in the environment. Challenge number two, choosing the right interface to reach the customer. Challenge number three, is for the customer, are you the only option? If that was the case, I would not be discussing all this because I am the monopolist. I can do whatever I want. But the number of options that are available are so many. The product, service and price options have increased. And since they have increased, they have increased the complexity in doing business. Business is not that easy nowadays. Right? So next important challenge that we need to overcome is to identify all these points very carefully. Otherwise, business will look very difficult. Complexity of business. Point number four. You are now automating. Earlier it was in, earlier it was manual. Now you are automating. Which data format will you use? Again a challenge. Which is a more easier one to understand? And okay, chalo, you will use some data format finally. Will you buy it from the market? Or will you build it by yourself? That is another headache. So should I do all this by myself? Or should I buy it from somebody else? All these are the other challenges that I would have to again face. Build and buy, underline point number four. Build and buy systems. And we might end up using our own data format. Most organizations have a whole sort of build and buy. And sometimes offer each with their own data format. There is no standardized format. That's also creating a problem. Fifth one is a very simple thing that all of you can understand being financial management students. People don't wish to spend money, but they want good results. Budgets are being cut. So heavy budgets are not there, but great results are expected. So with less money, I have to achieve more. Another challenge. What are the five challenges we discussed? Environment is changing and creating a problem for me. So many options are there to reach the customer. Difficulty in choosing one. Data formats are a problem. What is the third one? No, I missed the third one. Fourth one is build and buy. What is the third one? Right. Point number five, budgets are being cut. Did you underline? Right. What are the five key words, guys? Increased demand of environment. Number of interfaces, complexity of business, build and buy systems in own data formats and budgets being cut are the five challenges faced by organizations which are implementing BPA. I have to overcome all this and do BPA implementation. Organizations are realizing that all organization assets, systems, design, departments and people are interlinked. There are numerous internal process, there are numerous internal process that form an internal supply chain, they form an internal supply chain which relate to end-to-end -end process of the organization. Basically, one simple interface with the organization would be preferable online. One, maybe SMS, maybe email. One simple interface is preferable. Guys, those are not points which you can't solve. They are only challenges. You can always work on them. Understood? Realizing that an organization could be seen as a sum of its business process is the key element in selling a BPM and automation underline is not just about implementing technology it is automating about I mean it is about automating the business process underline in the right circumstances it is also about automating the business process right circumstances 
existing applications can be linked to each other by an independent process layer. BPM automation is also about a new way of working, online new way of working. Monitoring and managing the organization which could result in new organizational structure. Understood? Now, with all this that you understood, I want you to just quickly read the paragraph that is given below. What is BPM technology? And you will find a new equation in that to be written. BPM is equal to. Come on, I want you guys to read the paragraph and get me the answer for what business process management technology or BPM technology is all about. Come on, read that paragraph quickly. What is BPM technology? What are we interlinking and connecting? We will see. BPM provides what? Independent process layers and it covers underlying end-to-end -end business process. BPM technology can manage the flow of activities along different applications and people involved and also reduce the execution time. Analyzing information helps to improve the business process further. All this can increasingly be completed in real time. Management can make instant changes and validate if the if they are having a desired effect. Experience shows that experience shows that organizations which are successful in exploiting BPM technology online start by solving specific business problems with clear short-term return on investment. I told you one of the most important points in BPM implementation is short-term existence, short-term cost readiness. First you sustain in the short term, then we can automatically bring up in the long term. Using technology guys, the equation becomes very simple. BPM technology is equal to PPT, people plus process. Guys, can we achieve with people and process? Yes, no problem. People and process make a good equation. But what we also want, we can take technology to take it to the next level. People plus process plus technology. So that is what BPM is all about. BPM process and our nation includes what? So write down the equation once again in this format. PPT. BPM is equal to people plus process plus technology. They gave no process and organization which means people as well as technology. PPT. That's what business process management is all about. Have people, have process, have technology. Alright, one last small concept to discuss and close about what BPM implementation is. Value chain automation. We have a value chain discussion in strategic management also. Right? So, right now we are not going to discuss what a value chain is. We are going to discuss what value chain automation is. But to discuss what automation is, you should know the chain. Right? So, let me introduce you to what a... Michael Porter. Right? Michael Porter, one of the basic... Uh, one of the very prominent persons in management who has put forward profound theories, Porter's five forces model and all, has come up with a value chain analysis. He says, right, so Michael Porter's value chain analysis, he says, every organization can be categorized into two activities. How many activities? Two. Primary activities and support activities. Primary activities and support activities. What is the primary activity of an organization? Is to get raw material, manufacture it, get the finished goods and send it out, market it, sell it, do after sale service. Is it a flow of activities guys? Getting goods in is called inbound logistics. What is it called as? Inbound logistics. Conversion is called as operations. Then we have outbound logistics. 
that means sending goods outside but nobody knows what your goods are outside therefore you have to do marketing after doing marketing you should go and do sales marketing and sales go hand in hand and then of course after marketing and sales after sales service is a very important thing guys you can't stop simply by selling you have to do after sales service is a very important task these five tasks he classified it as what primary activities to do all this do you need a procurement team who can get your raw material they are supporting the starting operation procurement team guys should you have machinery to do operations should you have machinery to do the operations so we need some infrastructure infrastructure to do all this if procurement and infrastructure and all are there is not enough do we need people or not yes so we need human resources and of course the most important value addition technology also we need to keep it the latest procurement infrastructure hr and technology what are all these these are all support activities to help these five activities run so this is exactly how right michael porter put forth and this is what is called as a value chain analysis guys what you need to understand here is at every stage at the inbound logistic stage the item is at a raw material does it does the raw material have some value does raw material have some value or not after this value then some operations are performed on it does the value go yeah so either it is in the form of wip or finished goods does the value go up or not after marketing it does the value go up after it is sold with the when the product is in the hands of the customer will the value go up even more if you are rendering proper service the value up to do all this you need procure now guys tell me one thing can all of these activities be done without use of computers guys concentrate on the question once again can all of these activities be done without the use of computers yes. yes that's how traditionally the whole world was running but right now with the introduction of concept of it what i am going to introduce you to is value chain analysis plus it which is giving me a new concept called value chain automation understood so first let's read about what value chain is and then what is that they are talking about see there value chain refers to separate set of activities which are necessary to strengthen an organization strategies which are linked together both underline inside and outside the organization it is defined as a chain of activities that a firm operating in a specific industry performs in order to deliver a valuable product or service the idea of value chain based on a process view of the organization the idea of seeing a manufacturing organization is made up of several subsystem what are the two classification guys value chain of a manufacturing organization can be classified into what primary activities and support activities the primary ones are inbound logistics operations outbound logistics marketing and sales and services while procurement hr management i mean hr management technology and infrastructure are the support act so if these five have to run you need these four that is the concept of value chain but what is our topic so right now introducing it into all these areas is what value chain automation is all about check that six business functions in the value chain are r and d design production marketing and sales distribution and rendering service are all those value adding steps or not value chain analysis is a useful tool for working out how we can create greatest possible value for our customers through that now one of the most important things that we need to understand is underline IT helps us to identify those ways in which we can create values for our customers and help us think how we can maximize this value guys how can you maximize the value is it either by delivering superior quality products see the options it could be either delivering super products or rendering great services or you can as well get the jobs well done do the job properly or give them superior products so can i use it to do all this activity that is what is called value chain automation not only this guys any concept when you add it to it becomes automation understood so that is what we have in this particular segment where we are talking about what bpm implementation is about what are the factors 
what is the need for BPM, how automation is taken care, what are the benefits and risks involved in BPM, what are the challenges faced in BPA and then also we have discussed about what value chain analysis is and how value chain automation takes place, right? This is what value chain is. In our next segment, we will be discussing about what is called as an accounting information system, what are the various cycles involved in accounting and then it is also you know important for us to discuss what information is, how is it becoming an asset to the organization and some fantastic concepts like BPR, right? TQM, Six Sigma are there, we will discuss those also in our next class, right?